Today I'm going to demonstrate one way that I created a custom built-in with an IKEA cabinet and floating shelves. What's going on? Welcome to today's video. My name is Colton and today I'll be demonstrating one way that I created a custom built-in within a hallway that had a whole bunch of dead space. I would just walk down this hallway and tap on the wall and it sounded really, really hollow. And so I got curious one day and just cut a little hole in there. There was plenty of space that I could create a built-in. I decided to go to Ikea and grab a cabinet or dresser that was a similar width that fit the space put up some vertical shiplap and add some legit floating shelves. And all the tools that I use will be down below in the description. So be sure to check those out. Now the time that it took me to complete this project spanned multiple days. So let's get started. Here's where I want to have the shelf. So I found the most hollow sounding point, cut a small hole, flipped on my light, poked my phone in. I wanted to see what was in there. And I kept making bigger holes until I got to this. As you're cutting, you wanna make sure that you're not going to cut any pipes, electrical, air ducts. And in this case, I got lucky because of all this dead space. And I removed this middle stud. Now I'm gonna pause for a minute. Before you start knocking out walls like Joanna Gaines, you need to make sure that your wall is still supported in the proper way and it's not a load-bearing wall. There's a ton of resources and videos out there that help you identify if it's a load-bearing wall or not. Now I remove these studs with the intention of reusing them. Now I need to frame out the recessed part. So here's my plan. Lay a stud down at the bottom, put one in the middle, one on the left, one on the right. This takes care of the sheetrock being put on the back and covering these ducts. Now the sides. Add another stud here and the sheetrock can fasten to this wood that's already here to the new stud. Same thing for the other side. Add a stud here for the frame and sheetrock can go from this point to this point. So I went out, cut the necessary lengths for each stud, came back, dry fit it, screwed them down to the subfloor. So this project started out with an arch design. That changed and decided to go more farmhouse shaker style. Cut more studs to frame everything out, pre-drilled my holes, got some wood screws, tightened it up, flipped it over, did an impromptu toenail screw so all these studs were secure. Did the same thing to the bottom, one in the front, two in the sides, and do this to the other side and the middle stud. I grabbed in this stud, framed out the front part of the shelf area, and I secured this stud by just taking wood screws and screwing it into the stud behind it. So then this also supports the sheetrock that's already there. So this is what I got so far. I had the back framed out to protect the air duct, and studs in the front to support the shelf and secure sheetrock too. I trimmed up the sheetrock a little bit more to go to the stud on the very top and I realized that I needed one more stud so I added that. Next I measured the depth and the width of the sheetrock that I needed for the ceiling first. Cut that to size and make sure when you're fastening sheetrock that you get this bit that'll make sure that the sheetrock screw goes into the sheetrock far enough so you can mud but it doesn't go too far that you go all the way through. Next I dry fit the sheetrock, marked where these studs were, went the appropriate depth, cut the sheetrock out, put it back up and the sheetrock is actually going to hug these studs. Is this the normal approach for framing and sheetrocking? No. I have all this excess sheetrock that normally wouldn't be there. But this completes the same purpose in making sure the sheetrock on the top is fastened. And I finished fastening this down. Now for the sides. Get the height, the depth of the sheetrock that you need, go cut it. And if you're cutting big pieces, you can just score the sheetrock a couple times on the finished side, flip it up, snap it back, score the back, and you're good. Now you can see here I inaccurately measured, but I fastened it anyways, because that's where the beauty of mud and tape come in. And don't forget to do the other side. Once I finish the sides, you'll see here that I cut way too much sheetrock in my initial cut and from where I framed it. So I went back, cut small pieces of sheetrock, put it in there, and screwed it in. Now for the back. Measure the height, measure the width, cut the sheetrock, came back, dry fit it, fastened it down, and also did the bottom. I'd recommend getting the sheetrock grater for sanding sheetrock down. Now the reason why I did it in two pieces is so while I'm fastening one, I can see where the stud is and fasten my screws down straight. Then for the bottom, you already have your line. I then realized for a level surface, I needed to remove this stud. So I cut it, used my pry bar, chipped away at it, and pulled it out and I removed excess sheetrock from the baseboard. Now I needed to test out how this IKEA cabinet would fit. This baseboard got in the way, so I removed it, but the shelf still wasn't flush with the wall. So I cut just enough sheetrock out from the bottom so the shelf would fit, and it worked. I got some metal corner beads, measured the length that I needed, and cut it. Did it to both sides. Now for mudding. I pre-cut the amount of tape that I need. I just like to use paper tape, put some mud down on the crack that you want to cover, lay the tape down, and then you'll take your mud knife and essentially flatten the tape to the sheetrock so it's as flush and close to the sheetrock as possible. Any excess mud, just go cover any of the other blemishes or mistakes you need to cover up. Do the same thing with the corners. Put some mud down, pre-cut your tape, put the tape on, and flatten it all down. Keep doing this until all your corners are mudded and all those gaps and imperfections are filled. While this mud was drying, I fastened down my corner beads, take some mud, cover that up, make it all flush and pretty it up. Make sure all of this dries completely, which can take a day or two. Next I wanted to get a very smooth surface, so I got my sanding block and a vacuum because it's dusty and sanded it all down. You can also do a wet sand and this helps complete the finish. And if for whatever reason you start to see tape poking through your mud after you sand, it may be a good idea to reapply some mud, let that dry, sand it down, and make it all smooth. Next, when I tried to put the IKEA shelf back in, because of the corner beads, I had to mark where the shelf would be, cut out the portion of the corner bead, cut a little section out, and it was very tight after I did this. 
but it still fit. Took some wood screws at the bottom, pre-drilled the hole, fastened it down to the subfloor. This shelf wasn't going anywhere. Attached the drawer, doors, shelf inside, baseboard at the bottom with a nail gun. Now the shiplap. I wanted to find the center, so I measured the width, put a mark for the center, so there's a whole piece in the center, and then both left and right sides have pieces that are ripped. This will create a more symmetrical look. So what I did was cut all of the ship up boards to the appropriate height. Then from that center part to the edge of the wall, I cut sample pieces of what it would look like and laid those out until I got to the board that I know I needed to cut, measured out that space, and ripped that board to the width that I needed. Take the ripped shiplap board, flip it over, Put some liquid nails, nail it. And a pro tip, when you lay shiplap, start with the overlying rabbit joint on one side, so then your next board is just a lay on top movement. And because I ripped this board, I just put the cut side against the wall. Liquid nail all your full boards, nail them until you get to the other side. Now for molding. I did the top one first, measured out the width, cut it, measured out the height for the sides, cut those, nailed them up. When I put the molding for the sides, there's a little bit of overhang from this cabinet. So I chiseled out a little bit of the molding, which allowed for everything to be flush again, and I'll fill this with mud, wood filler, and maybe even caulk it later. Go back and wood fill your nail holes and any other blemishes. Wait for all this to dry, sand it down, put some caulk in all around the molding, and I also did all around the top and bottom and sides of the shiplap. And make sure it's smooth, either with a tool or your finger. Now I had this gap on the side of my cabinet. Measured it out, found a square dowel that was thick enough, liquid nailed it, and put it in. Wait for this to dry, and I'll caulk it later. Now when you're caulking shiplap, you potentially may get caulk in these gaps, and I didn't want that. So I took a knife and cut them out. Now for paint. Taped everything off, took off the hardware, grabbed my paint gun, and started painting. I even repainted the cabinet for a very equal finished look. Remove the tape, add the hardware back on, remove any of the ceramic wrap or protective layers protecting your shelf and slide out the hardware that you're going to install first. Next determine the spacing between your shelves if you have multiple and in my case I wanted the sections to be even so I measured that out and made a mark. And because these floating shelves are going in a built-in like area I needed to have this hardware be very precise in its placement because the rods have a very specific place and the sides of the shelf would hit the wall. If I go too far left or too far right so I took some painter tape secured the hardware to the shelf so it wouldn't move. Took some more pieces and put it on the edge to indicate to not go beyond this point for the hardware when I install it on the wall. Held the shelf up to the wall, marked where my hardware could not pass on both left and right sides. Now with these marks on the left and right, combined with the mark that I made earlier, indicating the spacing of my shelves, I took the hardware, grabbed a level, screwed it in the one side, leveled it off, screwed it in the other, added the rest of the screws that came with the shelf. And if you want the most amount of strength, Make sure it's screwing into the studs of the wall, and that's made really easy to do with the amount of holes that are in this hardware. Grab your shelf, line it up, and slide it on. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you liked what you just watched, consider subscribing and also hit that like button down below. And also, if you want to see other how-to videos that I've completed in the past, go ahead and click this link right up here. If you want links to the products that I use in this video, you can also find those down below in the description. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.